This is a video presentation on the surgical technique of hysteroscopic lateral metroplasty. In this video, we are going to look at two different cases, one with a unilateral T-shaped uterus and the other with a bilateral lateral wall convergence. In this first case, notice that one of the walls of the uterus is convergent as compared to the other. When examined from the point of the internal os, it is seen that the internal os and the ostium on the right side form a straight line. However, when we look at the internal os and its relation to the ostium on the left side, there is a ridge of tissue that is projecting in between these two and this is the lateral wall convergence that needs to be treated surgically. Some of these publications also refer to this uterus as a seven-shaped uterus or a unilateral T-shaped uterus. As the hysteroscope goes inside the uterine cavity, one can see the correlation between the HSG and the intraoperative findings where the right sided ostium is seen very clearly from the vantage point of the internal os. However, when the telescope is turned around, one can see that the left ostium is not seen from the internal os and is obscured by the projecting ridge of tissue that was seen in the HSG film. It is this projecting ridge of tissue that needs to be dealt with. This is the operative procedure which is now being started and the look has changed a little bit because of the chromo perturbation that was performed. Now when we come to this point, we see a distinct transition between the epithelium of the cervix, the internal os and the epithelium of the uterine cavity or the endometrium and that is where, where the transition point is, is the place beyond which one has to start the incision. So leave out the ring of the internal os and start cutting just beyond the ring of the internal os. It is good to have a new sharp tipped scissor for this reason, although it may not be practical every time as in this case, it is a good idea to have a very sharp tipped scissors to do this job. Also note that while doing the cutting, we are using the fixed blade of the scissor which is being thrust into the lateral wall and the cut is being made over it. This not only makes the incision easier but it also significantly prolongs the life of the scissor and the scissor will last for several cases more. Gradually keep deepening the incision on one side until the ostium is clearly seen from the internal os. This is not a surgery that can be done very quickly and one must take small bites in order to cut the lateral wall just enough not to cause too much post-operative scarring but to rather try and make it symmetrical with the opposite wall. The line of cut always has to be in the center that is between the anterior walls and the posterior walls. In this particular patient, because only one wall is convergent, it is very easy to compare it with the other side and see whether it has been done or not. As one reduces the pressure, one notice that there is a flow of blood from the lateral wall signifying that the fibrous part has now been excluded and we have reached up till the good vascular part. Here, this can be said to be the end point of the surgery as both the ostia are now clearly seen from the internal os and this is where one must stop the surgery and uh, put in some sort of adhesion prevention measure. We usually use a Foley's catheter. Here both the ostia are seen in one single view signifying the end of the surgery. The second surgery that we are going to demonstrate now is a bilateral T-shaped uterus or a genuine T-shaped uterus. Compare the HSG film with the normal film in the center. In this particular patient, as the hysteroscope goes inside the uterine cavity, one will find that the cavity is very narrow and tunnel shaped as compared to the normal uterine cavity that we usually find on the hysteroscopy. So this is a very narrow tunnel shaped cavity which can be collaborate, corroborated with the HSG film that is shown at the side of the image. As one enters this cavity, one sees that it is a very slim tunnel shaped cavity and a deep laterally placed ostium on both the sides and there is no question at all of being able to see the uh, ostia from the internal os all that one sees is a tube or a tunnel shaped cavity and deep seated laterally placed bilateral internal uh, bilateral ostia 
so this requires a significant correction incidentally there is also a fundal indentation that needs to be corrected so overall this is a very narrow and constricted cavity and with a very low uterine volume for the growing embryo similar to the first case the incision will start from just beyond the cervix notice the change in color and the difference in texture between the cervical epithelium and the endometrium and that is going to be the point from, from where we are going to start our incision so beyond the internal loss that would be the internal loss roughly where the scissor pointed and just beyond the internal loss approximately of course one starts the incision the incision is not taken too deep primarily one can always deepen in serial cuts as is required but again the fixed blade of the of the scissor is thrust inside and the moving blade cuts over it it is important to have a sharp tipped scissor for this purpose as well occasionally one needs to go back and forth in order to check the location of the ostium because it is easy to get carried away and make multiple cuts that will deepen but will not make a one will not make a fine cut that reaches up to the ostium thereby leaving a ragged edge at the end and that may not lead to a good expansion of the uterine cavity so keep guiding your incision based on the position of the ostium on that particular side here small incisions are being taken and we see that the ostium uh, slowly starts coming into view it is not necessary to complete the entire incision in one single go one can always go back and forth and deepen the incision in successive layers so as to get a fine cut and shape the uterine cavity in the way the surgeon wants this is a distinct advantage of using the scissor because the texture of the incised tissue can also be seen its vascularity can be noted and as one cuts with the scissor the pressure of distension automatically moves the two walls away and guides the surgeon to the next uh, probable line of cut so here the scissor is gradually cutting and as you can see the uterine cavity keeps opening up there is very minimal or zero risk of perforation because the ostium itself is your guide and tells you how deep you have to cut in order to achieve a good cavity when in doubt one can always take a look on the other side and because both the halves are symmetrical as we have already seen on the hsg one knows exactly how deep uh, one must cut in order to achieve the end point of the surgery in case one is in the surgeon is in doubt he can undercut a little bit on one side and then proceed to do the other side and then come back to the first side again rather than over incising one side and causing bleeding which may result in abandoning the surgery too early in the duration of the uh, case so here a few incisions have been taken and yet i feel that there is more to be done there is more deepening of the wall on this particular side that needs to be achieved and so millimeter by millimeter we are taking small incisions in order to release the uterine wall and make the uterus expand i am now satisfied with the left side and we are now going to proceed with the right side similarly also for this side uh, the fixed blade of the scissor must be inserted into the lateral wall of the uterus and the incision has to be started the incision is slowly proceeded or progresses towards the ostium always keeping in mind the level of the ostium and the fact that the scissor must cut specifically between the anterior and posterior walls if maximum separation of both the walls is to be achieved one notices that because of the use of the scissor you are able to see the small spiral blood vessels that keep coming up and you know that you are gradually reaching a zone of more and more vascularity here because one side wall has already been done we have that wall for comparison and again of course the probability to see the ostium on the patient's right hand side from the internal os so we are going to keep deepening the incision until the ostium is seen from the internal os and preferably both the ostia seen together in one single view although this may not be possible every single time because of bleeding and other factors that would be the ideal end point of the surgery so again after incising once i am not satisfied with the depth of incision so if you can always come back and incise in one more layer but do not cut too deep in the first sitting because the scissor may not be able to withstand that much pressure and you may get a ragged cut at the end
so this is uh, the uh, the one side that has already been done and now we are coming back to the left side to check here the fundal indentation is also being incised a little bit uh, in order to increase the overall available space inside the uterine cavity for the growing embryo so the fundal incision are also again is taken midway between the anterior and posterior walls by just snipping with a scissor and the uterus expands on its own now we are more or less done and this is the patient's right side that was the patient's left side and now both the ostea are seen very clearly let us now try to look from the point of the internal os and we can now see that both the ostea are seen clearly in one single view denoting the end of the surgery when the intrauterine pressure is reduced one finds that blood fills up the uterine cavity signifying that there is good vascularity and a probability that endometrium will line this cavity very well and the patient will have a good endometrial thickness in her subsequent cycles the same concept applies to doing this surgery by electricity a collins knife is used this is technically much simpler because one does not have to cut one just has to run the collins knife over it but most of the people are now switched to scissors because of the risk or at least the theoretical risk of collateral damage because of using the current and the subsequent synechia formation that may happen when electrocautery is used however technically this becomes much simpler than using the hysteroscopic scissors i hope this video has been beneficial for students and practitioners alike thank you so much for listening